You know our first guest from five seasons of Chuck, two Shazam movies. Now he goes where no man has gone before, to play with crayons. <laughs> Watch Harold and the Purple Crayon when it opens in theaters a week from Friday. Please welcome Zachary Levi. <laughs> What a good-looking audience. <laughs> Speak for yourself, man. Thanks, bro. Whoa. I have a great stylist, Warren Alfie Baker. He's backstage right now. Love hey. you, Warren. Hey, shout um, out to Warren. Listen, Lamont, I want you to know. <laughs> hey, also, <laughs> you. <Yeah. No. laughs> well, I wish you were Deadpool. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this was actually. Uh, by the way, how great is he at doing? Oh. Come on. Like, come on. Um, we are, uh, we're longtime friends. Yeah. We met at a game night. In fact, the other day, I randomly ran into you at a game at night. At a game night. And we were playing Mafia. Mafia. Anybody play Mafia in the audience? Yeah. <laughs> well, just really quick, break down the rules for Mafia. Mafia is basically, you know, if you took like 20 people and you put them in a big circle and like a third Mostly white people, because most white people sometimes we play, we sometimes play. Why got being raced into it, bro? Um, sometimes we and so about like a quarter or a third of that group of people yeah. get a card. Everybody gets a card and, and most of the people are townspeople, but some mm -hmm. of those people are mafia. And the whole point of the game is that the mafia, who know who all the rest of the mafia, mm -hmm. they're trying to lie and pretend to the rest of the group that they are just regular townspeople, mm -hmm. but they have these special powers to like basically kill people, kick them out of the game. And so the townspeople are trying to hunt them all down, figure out who they are, mm -hmm. and get them out of the game before right. they kill enough townspeople. That's the rough kind of, you know. Yeah, now we play with actors a lot of times too. We're very performative people. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, you know. What, all, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I can't be mafia. I have no hands, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's. Um, so normally, like normally when you play a game like Mafia, do you prefer playing with actors? You, play, you, you prefer playing with just like an average person? I don't know. I just, I like playing with anybody. I like anybody that's committed to the game. Okay. Be because the truth is, you know, even some very good actors are really not good at playing Mafia. Okay. Because they're, you, it's like poker. You can just tell when somebody's like hiding something behind their eyes when they're lying. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some of you are looking at your significant other right now. Like, yeah, yeah right I know. Yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> I, I've literally seen relationships completely fall apart paying Mafia. Because really? people will see, they will be lied to the whole game by their significant other. <laughs> so duped. And then at the end of the game, they will find out that, you know, their husband or wife or whatever was Mafia. And they're like, what have you not been telling me all, like, <laughs> our entire, it's, it's crazy. But some <laughs> actors are really not good at it. And there's other people that are not actors that are, like, so ruthless and so cunning and you would never. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a bad, I didn't have a good showing last time I saw you. You didn't, no, you died yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have a good poker face at all. <laughs> now, were you always like this? What about as a kid? Did you play like Dungeons and Dragons and all that type of stuff? You know, I no, I, I, I like I was super nerdy, but I was more nerdy into like comic books and video games and stuff okay. like that. I was never really into D and D. But no. a lot of people are into D and D. I mean, it's got a resurgence at this point. That's so crazy you say that because I found this photo and then I was, I was like, I knew he was gonna give me that answer, but then I was like, this photo I call bull. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's okay. Yeah. You can laugh. It's okay, guys. <laughs> it's okay. Tell well, me about this photo. Look how adorable that guy is. Look, look at, at him. him. Look I at him. I so insecure. I... Really? <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, you know, you're in high school. I was like... My sophomore year of high school, first of all, I was a spazzy theater video game rollerblader nerd. Like, mm -hmm. I was the trifecta of nerdery. <laughs> and, and I loved it. It was great. Um, but I was, like, doing theater and stuff, and I was kind of an awkward kid. And I was, like, five... Five, my sophomore year of high school, and then I came back my junior year of high school, and I had grown like eight inches. Like what? I just shot up in the middle of the summertime. And when you when you grow that fast, you end up like having no coordination in your limbs, <laughs> and your Adam's apples out to here, and your voice is cracking. I was like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. That's what I felt like. <laughs> and my lovely friend Aaron Young, that's my friend. In yeah, the where beer. is that this? Was, that was Sadie Hawkins' dance. The my Sadie Hawkins' my dance. My junior year. Yeah. You were very lucky. You know why? Because this is the dance where she asks you, right? Yeah. Very, very lucky. And I'm she was a wonderful girl who had excellent taste. Am I wrong? Come on. <laughs> were you were you mostly a good kid? You getting you getting in trouble at all? Because you well, seem like a, a really nice, guy. smooth guy. Like, Listen, I, well, thank you. I I've always tried to be a good person, right? Mm -hmm. I've always tried to do the right thing. 
high school, there's a lot of peer pressures and stuff to want to mm -hmm. go and have fun and party and go to parties and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like having fun. And uh, <laughs> our house, my, my house growing up, me and my sisters had lots and lots of parties. We had, because really? our parents were constantly out of town. Anybody else have parents who were always out of town? Your house was the party house, right? Your house ends up being the party house, because everybody's like, yeah, are your parents out of town? You're like, yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, but it was really amazing, though, because our neighbors never ratted us out. We had all manner of different people that lived around us. And at any point, they should have. I mean, we had so many people over, mm -hmm. and they were so loud. We had a volunteer police officer that was right next door to us. Mm -hmm. One of the coolest dudes ever. He would literally come out and bounce the party. What? He would come out, I swear to you, people would drive up, kids would be driving up, and they'd be looking for a place to park. And he'd come out with his flashlight gun on, on the hip. And he's like, you have Zach's party? What? And I swear to you. And, they, and the kids, like, he would basically do a little interrogation. Like, how do you know Zach? Are you friends with Zach? Do you know him well? <laughs> and he would make sure that the kids who, like, were, like, just heard about it but weren't really my mm -hmm. friends, nah, they weren't making it in the party. Wow. So not only did we not get ratted out, they helped us throw the kangers. <laughs> Where, where are you and from? And I'm not going to say his name because I don't want him to get in trouble. What's that? Where? Where? What is where, what? Ventura, California, baby. They got no rules. Ventucky. Come on, Ventucky. Ventucky. Yeah, bro. No the rules. Best. No. No rules. You ever no. get into, like, real trouble, though? Yes. When I was 17, uh, I used to smoke cigarettes. And Whoa. Oh, I know. I know. And, That's um, called dope. And in California... <laughs> <laughs> and in California, it's illegal to smoke before the age of 18. Mm -hmm. um, and I was up at, like, this uh, volleyball tournament with a bunch of my teammates up in Santa Barbara, California. Okay. And we had a big break, and we were like, all right, we'll go, we'll go get some cigarettes. All of them were 18. I was 17. We're smoking cigarettes by the truck, by the liquor store, whatever. And a couple of cops walk up to us and like, hey, we're just, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, trying to, uh, we just want to check IDs, make sure everybody's 18, all of us that were smoking. Mm -hmm. And I knew that... I can't show them my ID. I'm going to get a ticket or something. And I knew that that ticket was going to get mailed to my house. And then my mom mm -hmm. was going to find out that I smoked. And then she would kill me. She would literally end my life. It was a very traumatic household. Anyway. Oh, um, sure. Moms be killing. That's why we partied so much. <laughs> um, and so I make up this cockamamie. Like, I, I, I was like, hey, I don't. I hid my wallet. And I was like, you know, I'm, my name is Josh Howard. I grew up on, like, I gave a false address, phone number. By the way, and it was really good. <laughs> like, it was, it was like mafia skill good. I was yeah. like fully being another person. And it was all just coming to me. And I thought, oh, I got these guys. It's so good. And the guy's like, well, uh, maybe, you know, what's your mom's number so we can call her? And this is like pre-cell phone time. Mm -hmm. Some of you might remember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, no, my mom's out shopping and she, you're not going to be able to get a hold of her. And they're like, well, who else can we call? And I was like, nobody really. <laughs> I don't have any other family. And, uh, <laughs> and they go, well, you're going to have to come with us and we're going to have to hold you until you can prove who you are. Oh, wow. And they start walking me across the street. Guys, the, the police department was right across the street. <laughs> Wait, so this, I just we want to set this up. I was illegally smoking. Right in front of a the... liquor store that's across the street from yeah. the police. How small is Ventura? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> this, was, this was in Isla Vista, which is part of Santa Barbara's, like, co like, like uh, college, uh, UCSB, oh, like a I little see. college campus. He kind of, mm. lots of partying up there, too. Anyway, so they started walking me across the street and through the front doors, and, and I was like, wow, this got really serious really fast. Mm. And I said, guys, hey. <laughs> 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 um... I might have been fibbing. I'm not really. And they said, turn around, put your hands behind your head. Ooh. And I got cuffed. I got thrown into a little interrogation room. <laughs> I tried to plead with them. Guys, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what to do. You know, my, my mom, she'll, she'll kill me. I didn't want to. And they're, like, and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Calm down, Zach. Whatever. Now we need to call your mom. I'm like, okay, but please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Uh-oh. Because, so they go down. So I'm in this room. The door's open. They go right down the hallway into another office. And they make this phone call. And all I hear is their side of the phone call. And the phone call is, uh, yes, uh, uh, Mrs. Pugh, my, my real last name is Pugh, Zachary Levi Pugh. They go, Mrs. Pugh, uh, we got your son, Zach, here at the Isla Vista Police Department. And he said, listen, ma'am, you're going to have to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> ma'am, if you do not stop yelling at us, we are going to have to book your job. <laughs> I'm hearing this. I'm going, please stop. <laughs> so, and behind my, don't, don't. You with the cops, man, don't They're gonna lock me up forever. <laughs> and they and I hear this whole. I'm cry, literally crying, and she is saying God knows what to these cops. Mm -hmm. To the point where they come, they hang up the phone, they come back down, and they go. They literally, after all this, like whatever, yeah. They look at me and they go, 
We're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got lied. Lied to them. Lied to them. They're like, we get it. We understand now. Yeah. And I thought they were then gonna be like, so, you know, like, hey, just don't lie to cops anymore. But they're like, we're, we're so sorry. But also, we're still gonna book you. And then, so, really? I got, I got, I had to go to court. By the way, my mom made it worse there, too. Uh, <laughs> you get like a ticket at all? I got a, well, I got a whole like citation or whatever, but then I had to go, because it wasn't just for smoking the cigarette underage. It was because I lied to a police officer. Ooh. And so I had to go to court for it, and they gave me like 200 hours of community service. Well, I'm sorry, what? 200 hours of Did community you, service. You said you went to college in, 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 in North Korea? What'd you say? I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> 200 to, hours for cigarettes and lying? Go, bro, and there were, and I, when I went to the orientation, because it was like picking up trash at the beaches in Ventura, and uh, when I went to the orientation with all these other kids that were all also getting like community service, we were going around talking about like, oh, what did you do and whatever, and, uh, and <laughs> there were kids that literally were like charged with breaking and entering, like grand theft. They were like, oh, I got like 40 hours. And I was like, <laughs> how, how is this a fair, <laughs> guys, the justice system is broken. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> it is broken. It's broken. Yeah. More with Zachary Levi right after this. Let's go have some fun. Whoa. And the purple crayon. That's right. I saw this movie. I love this movie. Thank you. Me and my daughter. Thank you. I mean, wow. We sat on the couch and she was just like, I want to do that, Daddy. <laughs> she has this thing where if she watches a movie and she likes it, she asks if I can get her a dress based on that. So if there's a Harold in a purple crayon dress, you got to holler at your boy. Uh, uh, I think Sony Crayola. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this movie. Uh, well, I don't know. Some of you guys might know Harold in the purple crayon. It's a <laughs> beloved, yeah, beloved children's book. Mm -hmm. um, and I was approached uh, by Sony a few years ago, and they had this, you know, uh, original, really smart, funny script. And I was like, oh man, like, uh, that seems like it could be cool. And like, it's a very beloved IP. And let's, right. you know, and I have nephews and like all of that stuff. Yeah. Like, you, you, I think it's important that we create entertainment for everyone, but particularly stuff that's uplifting, stuff that is inspiring people to be mm -hmm. creative and, and uh, using their imaginations and believing in themselves. And that's really a lot of the messaging of the movie. Right. And uh, so we, you know, a couple years ago, we shot in Atlanta, and I became a pilot. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. You should be... You're not a real pilot, right? No, I want okay. to be a pilot. I well, would love... If Tom Cruise were in this movie, he would have made you become a pilot. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Yeah. You got yeah. a chance to work with Zoe Deschanel. I used to work with her. Yes! Yeah! She is... She's the dreamiest, you know. Yeah, of course. Like, she's so insanely talented and funny mm. and all that stuff, but she's such a wonderful human. She just yeah. has a great, grounded, maternal, even, I mean, she is a mom, but, but even beyond that, like, she just, like, really cares, mm. and she cares about other people, and mm. that's the kind of leadership that you really want and need in this town, more right. than anything, you know? It's like when you can find other lead actors or mm. directors or producers or whatever that, like, genuinely care about the cast and the crew and the product because they care about the audience, right. you know, then that's who you want to work with. And Zoe just has that type of, like, awesome energy. Well, you, you seem like a caring person as well. Exactly. So much so that yeah. you've created a community for folks in Texas. Oh, I'm trying, trying to. No, you're doing it. Man. <laughs> you're doing it. Damn, I, I am doing. I'm doing it. It's tell them taking... about this because this is this is really cool, man. Well, listen. I, uh, when I started working in Hollywood, uh, I, I got my first look behind the curtain and I saw how all the sausage was made, and I was just really bummed out because mm -hmm. I, I think that this industry, unfortunately, like a lot of industries. Mm -hmm values profit over people. Right. And, I, and I don't think that's right. I think we need to invert that big time. And we need to do that across the board in every, every industry. Mm -hmm. um, we, need to, we need to value the workers. We need to value the products mm -hmm. and therefore downstream of 
how it affects all the people consuming this product, whatever it is. And Hollywood, because this was my industry, I was like, I want to make it better. I want to do right. something better. And I think in order to do that, I have to kind of create my own version of that. Mm -hmm. And that would require our own little independent, like new United Artists type of studio. And if I'm going to go so far as to build a studio, why don't I build it where it has like living accommodations in it? So all the people that came together to make TV shows and movies and music and video games could all live and work wow. and play in one campus. And so that's been my dream for 25 years. And I moved to Austin, Texas, and I bought some acreage so I could go and do that. Yeah. That's pretty damn cool, man. Yeah. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Harold and the Purple Crayon, ladies and gentlemen. It opens in theaters a week from Friday, and we'll be right back with Billy Magnuson. <laughs>